So if we think a little bit about things that are killers, and I don't mean Hitler or Stalin or, or Genghis Khan or something like this, but things like traffic accidents and diabetes and AIDS. And each one of these is killing about a million people a year from traffic accidents globally or diabetes or AIDS. And then you look at what air pollution is doing and it's killing seven million people a year, right? Every single year, it's the largest single environmental threat that we have. And this is a global epidemic. It's costing more than twice as many lives as these other three factors combined. We spend hundreds of billions in order to have traffic safety and to find solutions for these diseases. And we still complain about the tiny amounts that we're, we're using on emissions control. And I think that that balance is not correct. Air pollution kills, and it's both an obvious and a subtle killer. We're born with a nose, and so my, my high school biology teacher in, in Minnesota, this, this was Nels Thompson, so he taught us that the nose should warm the air as it goes in, right? And, you know, it's very cold outside, so it's good to, to warm the air, humidify the air, and this keeps the lungs comfortable. And the, the nose also acts as a filter, so it's removing particles and dust and so on that you, you might have in the airstream. And that works just fine, but it doesn't work for very small particles. And these, two, these small particles uh, follow the stream of air into the lungs, and they're able to deposit foreign chemicals directly into the bloodstream. So it's really an excellent way of getting kind of strange things that shouldn't be in you, inside of you. So air pollution is a mixture of these particles and some toxic gases. So these toxic gases include ozone, nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, and formaldehyde. And we, we'd like to control these things. So air pollution is killing in obvious ways. It's causing lung cancer and it's causing respiratory infection. But it's also killing in less obvious ways. It could lead to stroke or heart disease or chronic obstructive lung disease. So you think, where do these particles come from? Uh, it could be the soot from, from diesel cars, or when things wear out, they, they make little tiny particles. It kills in these obvious ways. It kills in less obvious ways, but there are also non-obvious things that are caused by air pollution. And one of these is poverty. So air pollution is uh, a drag, this is according to the World Bank, of about 8% of the Indian economy. Right? The, the GDP of India is decreased by 8%. In China, it's 10%. If you look at the United Kingdom, air pollution is costing about 5 billion pounds every year. And in the United States, it's $45 billion per year. So air pollution is causing poverty at the same time. You could also look at the effect of air pollution on agriculture. And there was, there was a very interesting study in India, and it said that the entire wheat harvest of India was decreased by a fifth due to air pollution. And this, this damages plants, and that was uh, causing less wheat. In some districts, the rice yield was reduced by a third, and the wheat yield was reduced by a half. So taken all together, Air pollution is leaving us sick, poor, and starving. So that's why I want to provide you with air that does not kill you. Almost all of the air pollution that we breathe in is man-made. And so you could say that these deaths are preventable if we would only stop making air pollution. Air pollution is made quickly when we burn things, and it's made bit by bit as we wear things out. We make air pollution when we turn on a car's engine, when we drive on rubber or steel wheels, and when we use the brakes. But air pollution is not all our fault. There are many natural causes of air pollution. There are volcanoes, and there are forest fires, and there's photochemistry occurring within the atmosphere. So we find that air pollution is a local problem, it's a regional problem, it's a global problem, and taken all together, 
it's very difficult to control. It's very difficult to stop. Once upon a time, we had to worry about killers that were things like accidents or hunger or predators. And to stay safe, we would gather together in cities. Today, the tigers are more worried about us. And the, city in the, air, the air in the city is so polluted that the, city, the cities themselves have become dangerous. Most people today are living in cities and they spend most of their time inside of buildings. So air pollution is a problem of both industrialization and urbanization. The smart cities of tomorrow will protect their citizens and provide shelter, transportation, sanitation, and clean air. Air pollution. You cannot see it, you can't control it, and it's going to kill you. So what do we do at Air Labs? At Air Labs, we do three things. We analyze the air so you can see where the pollution is. We clean the air to give you control, and we deliver the clean air where it's needed so it won't kill you. We analyze, we clean, and we deliver. So there are some traditional ways of cleaning air. These could be things like catalysis or using a scrubber. And these use a lot of energy, and so they're just not practical to use on large scale in order to, to clean all of the polluted air that you have in a city. They make a lot of sense to use at a point source, like a factory or at the end of a tailpipe, when you have concentrated pollution. But they can't make large volumes of air cleanly and cheaply. So the thing we've done at Air Labs is to figure out how to make clean air for the lowest price. And in nature, all kinds of pollution will be removed from the atmosphere. It might be washed out by rain, it might be broken apart by sunlight, and it could be burned up in chemical reactions in the atmosphere. So in atmospheric chemistry, we study how pollution is vulnerable. And I've done that for 20 years. And then I started to wonder, if nature can clean air, why can't we? So we founded Air Labs, and we got to work, working at Copenhagen Science City, which is a kind of artist's collective of innovation around the university science campus in Copenhagen. So imagine that you had so much clean air that you didn't know what to do with it. Where would you put it all? At Air Labs, we found a way to make that clean air. So we use environmental chemistry, we use nanoscience, and we've created a very small filter that's able to make a lot of clean air. And this is a system that can go after the bad guys that you find in urban air pollution. So that's particles and nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and formaldehyde. And I think that this is a kind of revolution to be able to make clean air so cheaply. So our goal is to get these filters everywhere that we can. We want them inside cars, inside train stations, on polluted streets, and inside of office buildings. It's important to put the clean air in the right place. And it turns out that there's a lot of polluted air around a city. It could be hundreds or thousands of cubic kilometers of air that's polluted in a region. You couldn't beat the wind. So you have to put the clean air in the right place. So in order to do that, we need to find out where the air is polluted and where people are being exposed to the air pollution. It turns out that there are a lot of air pollution monitoring stations, and the, these might be put in the middle of streets, they might be put on the roofs of buildings, but they're not put where we're spending our time. So we worked to develop a portable air pollution monitor, and I've got one of these here. So this is a little unit, it has a, a laser, there's a small air pump, a fan that sits in here, and then it counts the particles. And so I can see that right now in this room, we have about 40 micrograms per cubic meter of PM 2.5, right? So this is a size class of particles that are able to make this journey through the nose and then deposit into your lungs. And the European Commission says that the exposure threshold for PM 2.5 is 20 micrograms per cubic meter. So right now in this room, 
it's possible the error, there's a lot of you out there that I see. Uh, these, these things, uh, they're cheap, right? We, we have a, a unique technology that we're using to measure the gases that you have in air. We'd like to arm students with knowledge. And we imagine that school classes would go out, you could measure the air quality in your school, in your neighborhood, and then you have the knowledge that you need in order to combat the problem of air pollution. We've given these to students at the University of Copenhagen and they've looked at the air quality that you have in, in London, Mexico City, Copenhagen, and in Tokyo. And we saw particle levels on the London underground that were 20 times more than you have at street level. And so then you wonder, what, what is the pollution that you have at street level? And it, it depends on exactly where you are. So you, you have a different amount of pollution if you're at the sidewalk or at a bus shelter or away from the street or if you're in traffic and a car is taking the air into the vehicle directly from the roadway. So we, we rented a smog mobile and we drove this around in, in London in tight traffic for two days and we saw peak concentrations of particles that were, were up to four times above the exposure limit. So I, I think it's a, it's a workplace safety issue if you're a taxi driver or a a delivery driver. We saw nitrogen dioxide concentrations that were 20 times above the exposure limit. So I think this is, this is every day when people are driving within cars. If you have these portable monitors, you can see what's going on uh, using citizen science and find out what your exposure is. So we clean the air and we created this small filter that's able to remove particles and chemicals like the nitrogen dioxide. And then we needed to figure out how to deliver this air. And then we use computational fluid dynamics. We, we have some experts in computers. And we could make a system that was able to deliver a lot of clean air. And so I have the, the very first one of these units right here. We call this the air bubble. This is able to remove two-thirds of the NO2 from the car within three minutes. We did road, te road tests in London. It's taking away the NO2, particles, ozone, and formaldehyde. Uh, all together, we would like to analyze where the problem is, for example, for drivers. We'd like to clean the air, and then we deliver it where it's needed. An air pollution control system that you have inside a box is never going to be able to clean the entire atmosphere. There's a cloud of pollution uh, over Asia and over southern Europe that you can see from space, right? There, there's very much polluted air. And at Air Labs, what we do is to, is to create clean air zones in cities. We do that using a toolbox of solutions to deliver the clean air. We'd like to use familiar items that you have in urban areas. This could be street furniture, advertising, columns, planter boxes, and we would clean the air and then deliver this to people. We've done this in two ways. Uh, on the left, you see a clean air bench. This premiered at King's College about a year ago today. We, we installed it off of Oxford Street on the West End. It creates a bubble of clean air and then fills that bubble with purified air, with no air pollution. We also work together with J.C. Decoe and the Body Shop to make an advertisement that cleans air. And we installed these in bus shelters around London this past summer. So at Air Labs, we give people in cities smart systems so they can take control of air quality in buildings, on streets, in the subway, and inside of cars. We installed a network of pollution sensors around London this past fall. So using the high spatial resolution of many of these small sensors and the high time resolution that you have from microelectronics, you're able to get a detailed model of where the pollution is in the city. You can combine that with information about where people are and find out where the exposure to air pollution is taking place. We find that there, there are exposure hotspots within a city, and that's where we want to focus the pollution control. 
and there's no time to waste. So Air Labs is installing a large-scale, open-air cleaning system called the Air Haven in Delhi in about six weeks. I think there are many places around the globe that, uh, that need clean air now. So my goal is to provide you with air that does not kill you. The best way to do that would be to get rid of cars and factories and power plants and every other source of air pollution. It's a very worthy goal, and it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take a little bit of time. And while we wait for all of these sources of pollution to stop, I think it would be a very good idea to spend as much money as we can to provide clean, breathable air. The same kinds of money that we spend on traffic safety and fighting AIDS and fighting diabetes. The air in cities is killing us. Thank you.